to the hot hell darkness. Your room is ready, child. Enjoy your stay. <laughs> Have you ever wondered why children like you are so round? Maybe the reason you never move off the sofa is because you can't. Because you're nothing more than a human balloon that has to be pumped up with air. Because you haven't got any bones left in your bodies to hold your skin in shape. And what is worse, you don't know whether I'm telling the truth or not, do you? And why should you? Because you have never been told. Well, now I'm telling you. Be scared of the Bone Shaker. This is the Visitor's Book, where all the grisly tales of all my wicked guests are written down. Want to see why one of these bad children is down here? This is Ida's story. I call it Lazy Bones. Ida Lydon wore elasticated trousers to accommodate her ever-expanding waistline. She was the laziest of lazy bones and had lived on the sofa ever since moving out of her cot. Six weeks later, she had organised her life so that everything came to her and nothing had to be fetched. Not by her, at any rate. Concerned that eight straight years on the sofa might not be good for her health, Ida's parents booked her in for a checkup at the doctor's. My guess is that she got a taste for the easy life when you were carrying her about in your tummy, Mrs. Lydon, and hasn't changed her taste since. Oh, I'm impressed. How can you tell that? By the fact that she isn't here for her checkup. She refused to come. Said it was too much effort getting up off the sofa. So we came instead. Do you do everything for her? Absolutely not. We're not her servants, you know. Apart from washing, eating, dressing, doing her homework, reading, walking, running, tying her shoelaces, cycling, going to the loo, shopping, skipping, sneezing, cooking, brushing her teeth, swimming, waving, singing, painting, blinking, blowing her nose, chatting, stroking kittens and switching on the TV set, she does everything for herself. That just leaves sleeping. Oh, yes, she's good at that. The doctor prescribed exercise. So when the school announced that it was doing a charity walk in aid of lard, the charity for large and reclining daughters, they begged the headmaster to let her do it. Ida is a, is a lovely girl, or so I'm told. I, I've never actually met her. She doesn't like school, I noticed. So she doesn't come in. It's not the teachers or the lessons. It's just the um, getting up and getting in that defeats her. She did come in once, but the school lost her. She was found fast asleep on her own coat hook. Ah, yes. <laughs> Too lazy to take off her coat, I remember. Anyway, back to the charity walk. It's just that with younger pupils taking part and with their tendency to get upset at the slightest thing, I really don't think it would be a good idea if Ida died on the course. Do you think she might? Well, she hasn't moved since she was born, has she? Apart from that day on the coat hook. Uh, apart from that day, yes. So her heart is going to be a little unused to exercise. This was the wake-up call that Mr and Mrs Lydon needed. We've got to put a stop to her laziness or she'll die. Listen to this. Lazy people have lazy bones. Get rid of the bones and the laziness will disappear too. Mm. Or so says the Bone Shaker, the latest wacky craze to come out of Japan. Built from old bones discarded by a graveyard. What does that mean? The ancient cemetery of Nagashoni sits on the edge of a cliff. As the land recedes into the sea, the bones of the dead are disgorged through the cracks in the cliff face. The bone shaker fillets lazy children. Ugh. 
with his finger. Apparently, it's less painful than appendicitis. We should meet him. I'll drop this bone shaker chap a note right now and ask him if he'd like to pay Ida a little visit. While they waited for a reply, Mr and Mrs Lydon decided to get their daughter fit. Bugger. I'm not open for business today. Too bad. You're getting off that sofa. You'll have to do better than that. I haven't cut my fingernails in ten years. They tried to entice her outside with a hobby. Beekeeping. We've got the hive in the garden. It's great fun and they are rather sweet. If that thing stung me, I'd have to scream and jump around like a stupid ballerina. Think of all the energy I'd waste when I could be lying around conserving it. So, the looking after bees to get Ida outdoors idea was abandoned. But not before the lazy girl had trained two of them to lower her eyelids whenever she needed to sleep. Good night, bees. Wake me up when it's pizza time. Apart from hide and seek, which Ida could play by herself... Now I see you. Now I don't. Now I see you. Now I don't. Now I see you. No, I don't. Every other sport that her parents suggested she try was met with the same response. No, no, no. No to everything you want me to do. It's my life. I can live it how I like. And I like it here on the sofa. Just then, the letterbox clacked. It sounded like a bone breaking. Dear Mr and Mrs Lydon, bones of Nagashoni everlasting skeleton hankering after kid exacting revenge. He's actually coming. I wonder when. Who knows, he sounds as if he likes to do things differently. Oh, yes! Doing things differently is exactly what the Bone Shaker likes. <laughs> and the next day, while Mr and Mrs Lydon were out, and Ida was asleep, he did it. Huh? What's going on? Quiet. I'm listening. As I thought. Lazy bones. Help! Oh, what's that? Your heart. You've never heard it beat before because you've never taken exercise before. Or ever been quite so scared. I'm not scared. Maybe not now, but you will be. The head bone's not connected to the neck bone. The neck bone's not connected to the chest bone. And the chest bone's not connected to the hip bone. Because they're all in my hands. <laughs> And he relieved the lazy girl of every lazy bone in her body. When Mr and Mrs Lydon returned from the shops... Ida? They found their filleted daughter in a state of skeletal collapse, lying like a deflated parachute on the floor. They picked her up and took her out of the house for the second time in her life. To the garage, where they pumped her full of air. Look, Mummy, it's Balloon Girl. If you listen carefully, I think you can hear Ida now calling to me from her bedroom. Night, night, Porter. I need pumping up. I think I've got a pump. Oh. Oops. You know what's happened there, don't you? That razor-quilled porcupine I gave her as a pet has just burst her bubble. 